52. And let's see, we have some other visitors that uh, I hope will also be here. And let me see, let me just say for Elizabeth's sake and also Kay, although I think you know this already compared to some of the other boards and committees in town and especially the town council, the personnel board is much more informal. We call each other usually by our first names. We don't have to say, you know, Mr. This or Ms. That. Um, we just say, hey, you buddy, what's on your mind? And uh, enjoy the conversation there. Uh, let's see, who else are we? Mr. Miller, does anybody know if uh, Earl is planning on being here? Uh, he so, did confer confirm um, okay. last week that he would be here. I will okay. try to call, right. um, email him as well. And I'll, I'll send him a text. So I mean, I'm going to pop off screen for just a moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and Tammy, in addition to all those personnel uh, changes in the library, you guys have had nothing but a calm, serene uh, environment with respect to funding, right? <laughs> right, right. We, we are having long meetings often. Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping um, the town council did approve moving ahead with the design development and construction bid process, and then we'll see from there. But well, lots I've... of plans, contingency and otherwise. Two bad adjectives for meetings. Long. <laughs> so uh, some consider them a necessary evil. Some consider them what makes everything work. Right. Well, we're we have a good relationship with the town, and we're working on a new MOU right now. So. Oh, okay. All right. Making progress. Good morning, Mr. Town Manager. Good morning. To have you with us. And uh, since uh, you are here, even though there may be one or two others we're expecting, let's get the show on the road. So I'm calling a meeting to order. I have no opening remarks other than to say welcome. It's nice to uh, see some new faces. And uh, it's been a while since we have met. And there has been some turnover among personnel and one of the agenda items which you'll get to really pretty quickly is some uh, some introductions of the new folks do is there anybody here who has wishes to make public comments. All right. Um, and do we have any reports that we might not hear a little later in the agenda. Um, that should be made now. And then I want to move ahead to the first item of new business, which is some introductions. And I realize a very important person and uh, position was left off of this uh, list. And that is the interim HR director, Kay Zlogar. So Kay, let me ask you to introduce yourself to the rest of us. You've probably known by everybody, um, but uh, tell us who you are and how you got to be in this position. I just happened to be at my desk when uh, Paul asked me to <laughs> <laughs> fill in at, when Donna Ray left. Uh, I've been with uh, Kay Slogar. I've been with the town for uh, over 50 years and uh, have used to be the human resources director before I retired a long time ago um, and have been helping out with labor relations and uh, basically whatever Paul has asked me to do. So I'm here for this little stint. Um, I hear that they they've uh, are on the second round of um, interviews for the Human Resources Director, so I'm hopeful that it will be a short stint. 
Yeah, well, no, just it. You know, Kay is invaluable. I mean, she's been so supportive of all of our HR directors um, over the years, um, and has a um, memory like that remembers everything, every collective bargaining agreement, every discussion that led to a collective bargaining agreement. Um, and it's just that kind of resource is invaluable for us. And um, we really appreciate that she's agreed to fill in this role for us at this important time. Well, I second those sentiments and I want to add, given your long experience with the town and uh, previous HR director, and you did say the word retirement, and here you are. <laughs> and I would like to uh, say, and, and, and I use this term to describe my own experience with retirement, Kate, so please don't take offense. Uh, well, let me say this. Uh, I've been retired for a while too, and so I confess to people that I have been flunking retirement badly. <laughs> oh, <And> yeah. <laughs> so, Perhaps the same can be said for you, but the good news is we're all the better for it. The town is the better for it. Mm -hmm. okay. I can't imagine Thank a you. more perfectly qualified person <clears throat> to step into the HR director's role for a while and help us keep going uh, until we find a, a, a permanent uh, person for that, for that position. So welcome, Kay. Welcome back, Kay. Thanks. And... Uh, now I'm just I'm working off the agenda here, and sis, Mr. Uh, Crest Director Earl Miller is here. Let me say welcome to you, and can you please introduce can, your yes? Can I interrupt? So, so we post this meeting as a Zoom meeting, but not as a Zoom webinar. So members of the public can't gain access. So we're going to oh. post this link that we're all in onto the website, and to there's a reporter who's trying to get in and can't get in. So um, I just will send just so you're where you probably since it's not set up in a webinar, it's everybody will be in the room in essence, but as long as we treat everybody equally, um, that's the, way, the only way we can handle it unless we reschedule this meeting. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so the reporter will be able to see this after the fact. Is He's that... no he'll he'll be in the room like oh. just like us and and, and can he and, participate? Uh... No, he shouldn't participate. Okay. All right. Except unless Great. he had public comment, but he won't have public comment. Um, fine. Thanks for letting us know that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back to back to Mr. Miller. Who are you? How'd you get here? So I'm Earl Miller. Uh, I'm from Holyoke. Uh, pretty oh. proud of. I, I say that a lot. I'm just. Uh, I'm proud of where I'm from. Like I hope everyone gets to be. Um, my my by trade, I'm a certified peer specialist uh, through the state. Um, before I kind of so got into government work, I uh, I worked for the Wildflower Allowance, Alliance, which used to be the Western Mass Recovery Learning Community. Uh, ran a center in Springfield. Uh, pretty proud it was the busiest RLC center in the state. There are one in every of the five PMH areas. We had 60 to 100 people a day. Uh, started a housing program there called Finding Shelter Through Peer Support. We were fairly successful at getting folks uh, housing in Springfield without any subsidies. Um, I worked for the Center for Human Development for a period as the director of peer roles. Uh, then I worked to uh, the Department of Mental Health. I, I guess I, I thought government would be interesting. It has been. Um, I was there for four years as the Director of Recovery for Western Mass, um, working both on some local and statewide policy um, and program development pieces, as well as being responsible for incorporating the kind of lived experience and um, voice of the folks who we were working with. Um, I've been with the town for six months as of the 21st. Um, I would say some days it feels like it's flown by and some days I feel like me and Kay started on the same day. Um, <laughs> but but it's it's been really fun. Um, in that six months, we've kind of went from, from being the only employee to having a full fleshed out team. There's seven folks, uh, seven responders, a program assistant and an implementation manager. They're actually doing their morning briefing right now. Um, and, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, we are in kind of untread water here. 
Um, so figuring out how to get this department up and running in a way that serves the unique needs of Amherst, but also holds some kind of common connection with similar programs across the country. Uh, one of the things I'm really excited about is uh, last night I got to participate in a meeting with folks from uh, Albuquerque and Minneapolis and Seattle, and uh, we're talking about a responder exchange program now uh, so that our folks can go to other municipalities and, and we can host those folks. Um, so I, I could and do talk about this for hours. So I think sometimes it's easier just to, to take questions if folks have them. I think the piece I just want to share with you all is this is a dream job for me. Um, I remember reading the posting and thinking, well, they must, this can't be true. They, they can't actually be doing this. And um, I have found that the town means it, which is really refreshing. Um, you know, there are, there are some scary things coming up. I think that's just true of, of everything these days. But um, when I think about the future, I'm, I'm incredibly hopeful. Um, and so much of that is because of uh, existing managers in this town who have been wonderful ambassadors for me, who have done a lot of work to make me comfortable um, and to make sure I don't step any, on any landmines by accident. Um, and I, I've avoided almost all of them, which is, I think, pretty good. So um, glad to be here. Uh, it's, it's, it's really the privilege of a lifetime. Well, we're glad to have you with us as well. I was thrilled when you were identified as the person to, to fill this slot uh, and uh, have a hard time imagining who would be more qualified to step into this position. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you, because it is a new position and everything you do is, uh, is breaking new ground. And um, you're the person that we need. And I do have a question, but let me ask my colleagues if anybody else has a question for Earl. All right, mine is, I know your team has been doing a lot of training. Are you responding to calls yet? Yeah, we are. This is day 17 of responding okay. to things in town. And, and what I would say is, so I don't want to say surprisingly, I'm very confident in, in what we do. But I think what we found is that um, the biggest issue we're solving right now is this kind of desperate loneliness that folks are encountering. Wow. This, uh, post pandemic real I, I'm shocked by how many people are going through you know we we have a senior who we're seeing on a daily basis now who was going regularly months without interacting with another person um, outside of like medical appointments and so you know we're yeah we're responding to calls we're, we're still very much uh, it's it's low and slow I think is what we say um, Chief Nelson would say we're, we're building the plane as we fly it, which means uh, trying to be as deliberative as you can. Um, but yeah, we're responding. Uh, we're also doing things like delivering meals for the senior center as they're looking to fill some volunteer positions, um, supporting the survival center as they're having some, some challenging engagements. They've opened up for live lunch and, um, and in, in a lot of ways, just, just kind of still being in the town and, and kind of adjusting to the, the temperature of things these days. Okay. But for I think it's the best 17 days I could have hoped for. Great. Well, let's hope 100 days from now, you say it's the best 117 days. I can't, you could ima I can't imagine I won't be. <clears throat> okay. I'd just like to thank you for all your work with the library, because I know that you've been present at various events and very helpful to the staff and the director. And I want to thank you for that. It's the last sanctuary left. Yeah. So, Tony, first, uh, um, Jim Russell is here. Thank you, Jim, for joining us. I'm sorry you're in the you're in the room. So, but that's the only way we could get you in um, effectively. We just started the meeting and just have been doing introductions. Basically, Earl introduced himself, um, and also just on the, on Earl's position, um, you know, I think the, the um, one of the things Earl often says is that the way the program looks today it won't look that way in three months and six months and nine months and 12 months. And I was just at a play, at a conference where we talked to people from Durham, North Carolina, who have a very similar model to us. And they said the same thing. It took them two years to get their first responder on the street. We did it in warp speed, um, you know, and, but I, in, in doing that, we, I think we are, as he said, low and slow, make sure that we, you know, learn from what we're doing and, not take on anything that we can't handle and safety of all of our employees and the public is the, is the primary goal. Okay. 
Thank you. I actually have another question for Earl, uh, but I don't want to hog all the <clears throat> question time. And yeah, I have a question. Okay, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, probably a silly one, but uh, Earl, do you all wear uh, a certain, I don't want to say uniform, but a shirt with an emblem, or you just come in your regular street clothes? And how do you get to the situation in your own car, or do you come in a police car or on a bike? Um, yeah, that's yeah. just the basics. So, so, so two parts. I would say <laughs> normally I would be in our uniform. Uh, I was in meetings. Uh, I was where I worked about twelve hours yesterday. So my reward to myself was just wearing a regular shirt. Uh -huh. um, we have shirts that have our names, our badge numbers. We have badge numbers. I'm twenty two oh one. Um, we all have badge numbers, which are really a dispatch feature, um, our positions, and then our pronouns, which um, I know is a real shift for folks. Um, and and I, I like often think in metaphor. So the color of our uniform is gray, kind of representing that that is what we're here for is the, the gray areas of public safety. So we have gray shirts. Um, we're in the process of buying um, coats and, and hoodies. It's getting cold. So we want to make sure that folks can stay in uniform. Um, we also all have town badges um, and these nameplates that also have our badge numbers on them. Um, as far as transportation, we are, uh, like many departments in town, um, on the hunt for vehicles, um, which is challenging. We, we, I'm still maybe naively hoping in November we'll have them, but I find that I'll hold out hope until it can't, and then I'll, I'll set another target. Um, the town has been incredibly generous with us, so currently we're using the town electric vehicle, and the senior center has allowed us to use one of their vans. So our folks are showing up to things uh, in vehicles that have some town branding on them. Um, and that's consistent with what um, we had we had ex we had offered in the job posting. So um, we aren't having folks use their own cars for a variety of reasons. Um, and and thankfully, we're able to make that work because of the collaboration. I also just want to highlight that when we do get our vehicles, it'll be another really important collaboration point. The police department is generously offered to help us to outfit our vehicles. Um, and I think that highlights one of the most important features of what we're doing, which is this very close working relationship with the police and fire department in town that I'm incredibly proud of. Um, when I talk to my counterparts in other areas, other areas where this has become very political, um, they would give up a lot of money to be able to have the relationship with their chiefs that I do. So I guess that's a, like I said, I don't know how to answer a question quickly anymore. I'm hoping to <laughs> relearn that at some point. But the great well, question. I, I actually have a question. It's sort of before uniforms. And that is, and I'm sure I've seen this somewhere. How is it determined that somebody from your team goes out? rather than say somebody from the police department are you responding to 911 type calls is there a different number etc cetera, etc cetera. so 911 is a capacity we're building to uh, part of that low and slow approach is you know 911 calls are are the scariest space right callers are and i you know i don't I think sometimes this can sound like blaming, but in the middle of a crisis, sometimes the person calling is going to all, you know, struggle to accurately describe everything that's happening. They're also certainly not going to know everything that's happening. Right now, we're getting calls either directly from folks or we're getting referrals from the senior center or other entities in town for us to engage with folks. Um, the So, you know, we're not law enforcement. Uh, that's a tricky job. I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, so if there's a law enforcement need, if there's a, a crime that's been committed or violence that um, is, is reasonably expected to be there, um, then we wouldn't respond the same way we wouldn't respond if there was a fire. Um, we wouldn't respond as the reporting agency in those situations. We have found that there may be a role for us in doing traffic things at, at calls where another uh, public safety agency is going to be the lead. Um, but for us, it's really um, we can't do non-consensual stops. So the person has to be willing to engage with us to some degree. Um, and uh, often what it looks like from the police perspective is if it's um, our first call took five hours, mm -hmm. um, which is, a, I think, a, an information point that I wasn't quite expecting. Um, what we can be the best at is we don't need to shift the liability. We're not, you know, an ambulance where you need to get that ambulance back on the road. So what we're seeing is most of our calls are homeless folks. Um, who are looking for resources, seniors in town who are looking for social connection, um, or other folks who are just 
um, have some concern that doesn't involve a crime, uh, medical response, or, or a fire, actually. So um, right now we're, we're taking calls on our phones and we're also being referred by other departments, including we've had uh, one call so far where the police actually decided that, hey, this is a crest uh, thing. And so, uh, and they were right. We were able to resolve something fairly quickly. So um, I would say the way we're, we're deploying now is either folks asking us or this kind of constant conversation that's happening in public safety as folks are engaging with folks and, and we're a new tool. So I think for some folks, there's a hesitance and we're seeing the other thing with some folks where they're saying, no, Crest will do everything. And we're having to temper that expectation a little bit too. So um, again, I'm, I'm going to learn how to answer questions shortly soon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else with questions for Earl? If not, let's meet our new DEI director, Pamela. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, good morning. So uh, I New to the role, was sworn in on July 5th. Um, I am a lawyer by trade, so practice law for about, I guess, 12, 13 years. Have worked in higher education, probably equivalent amount of time. Uh, move, uh, moving back to Western Mass, I've been back and forth between Massachusetts, uh, Indiana, and the DC area throughout my professional career and um, became aware of this position because of a very close friend, now judge, uh, Mary Beth Ogilevitz, um, had worked for the town of Amherst and told me about the job and thought that I would be a good fit for it and that would be something that I would be interested in. So um, followed up on Mary Beth's um, recommendation and was able to accept the position that was offered and then uh, moved out I think I was, I, I drove out like the weekend of July 4th and started the next day <laughs> um, and uh, was able to, to stay with a friend of mine in Springfield until I moved into my home, which is actually in Enfield, Connecticut. So um, it has been a very interesting first sort of 90 days uh, following the police interaction with the Amherst youth. Uh, it's presented some challenges for, I think, Earl, myself, and the police, really still trying to figure out a lot of the parameters of this position. I've been working with Jen Moyston, whom I'm sure you all know very well, and I, I can't really imagine being in this job without her. So I sort of, I sort of think of, of me having the technical skills and Jen having all of the background and personal knowledge and uh, intimate relationships that will make this position and the department really successful. So she and I have been working on a number of initiatives. We are the staff liaisons to the Human Rights Commission, to the African Heritage Reparation Assembly, and to the CSSJC, um, and have been working with each of those various groups in trying to I guess, fulfilled their missions. Um, and they're at various stages along, along the way. Okay, welcome aboard. Thank you. Another person in my view with just wonderfully appropriate uh, credentials, experience for this new position. Uh, any of my colleagues uh, have any questions for Pamela? I do. Uh, uh, I don't have a question, but I do okay. have a comment. I don't have a question, but I do have Go a comment. Ahead, Rebecca. It's been a total pleasure working with Dr. Young, Pamela, um, as in her chairing the search committee for the new human resource director for the town. Have learned um, a great deal from her. Have really appreciate Pamela, your steady hand and your your. Uh, open and humble hand too. And there's Catherine's tail of the cat, which is <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. Um, so just, it's been such a pleasure and it's if, it's if you've been here all along and uh, like, yeah, this is exactly how it's supposed to be going. So I just really want to share my appreciation. For you, thank for you. Thank you very work. much. Yeah. So I should probably give you, so we are uh, an update on that search. So I am chairing the HR director search. We are in our second round interviews and um, are hopeful that we will have some finalists to for it on to, to Paul. Good. All right. Um, my 
question for you was actually I have two. Uh, is your team fully assembled now? Are you staffed up uh, to the extent? So I think right? to the extent that we expect it to be at this at this point. So uh, Jen and I are a team of two, and I um, and I really team is the wrong is really the wrong word to use. I mean, I, I see us as really partners in this because we have very complementary skills. I think so. Um, this is one situation where. Uh, you know, one plus one equals three, in that um, together we're probably much stronger than we would either be individually, and the sum of our holes is much greater. Um, so yeah, we are where we expect to be at this point, um, and and we shall see as time goes on whether there is a need for additional staffing. I think it will be dependent upon um, some of the objectives that are laid out for the department. So. There are some calls, for for example, in town for uh, a teen youth empowerment center, which some folks would say should be a part of this department. If that were the case, then we might need to staff a little differently. I, I think it's probably the case that a teen youth empowerment center would be better housed in rec. But you know, that's a question for the future. So at this point, we are where we expect it to be. Okay, thank you. I actually have another question. I should know the answer to this because I've probably seen it at some earlier meeting in some organization chart. This is actually, <clears throat> excuse me, for both you, Pam and Earl. Uh, who do you report to directly in an organization chart? The, the good thing is the answer is the same. <laughs> same yeah. uh, we, we both report to Paul. <clears throat> oh my God, you got him for a boss? Oh, well, <laughs> hang in there. <laughs> Okay. Been all right so far. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you run into any problems, let us know. Okay? <laughs> it's hard all to right. complain about supervising ten people when he's supervising fourteen. So yeah. Well, um, uh, we wish you well. Thank and you. Welcome aboard. And I'm Thank running you. down my list of on the agenda of new business uh, introductions. And the next one on my list is our new HR manager, Elizabeth. So. Let us know who you are, Elizabeth. Thank you for welcoming me to the personnel board. I appreciate being here. Um, I'm Elizabeth Pru. I'm the new HR manager. I've been here for a little over a month. Um, I have been in HR for about five years. Um, I came from a nonprofit um, that supported individuals with disabilities called Viability. Um, I started there as a recruiter and worked my way up to an HR manager there as well. Um, you know, I have experience in um, FMLA benefits um, open enrollments and um, employee relations. Um, Kay has been a great support to me um, during my time here, um, as well as Donna Ray as she transitioned out, um, as well as E. And I look forward to um, learning more about the town and how I can support everybody here. Well, welcome aboard. Thank Questions you. from folks? I would just like to uh, observe. Um, so you said you've been here about five months? No, about five weeks. Yeah. Oh, about five weeks. <laughs> yeah. okay, all right. All right. So uh, well, um, then my observation was, boy, you've had in a sh very short period of time, you're going to have three different bosses because was Donna Ray still around when, when you uh, signed up? Okay. Yes. And uh, Ben Kay and... Uh, Sometime in the not too distant future, we hope we will have a new uh, HR director and mm -hmm. we hope everything goes well. But once again, uh, the town is blessed to have somebody so well qualified to be uh, in that position. Thank so you. Welcome. And, and uh, just if I can jump in yeah, there, uh, Elizabeth has been a, a, a real trooper and, you know, we talked with her before. It, so that she knew that Donna Ray was was departing, and so she made the decision to continue to come to the town, which we were, I, I really appreciated a lot, um, and has just jumped in and sort of taken on a lot of stuff very quickly, and um, uh, would really appreciate the work that she's been doing. It's it, and it's 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 hard work, you know. The HR has been doing some really difficult work, um, so um, both she and Kay have really stepped up in a big way. Yep. Thank you. Now, again, I'm working off the, uh, the new business item on our agenda. 
we've had uh, an update. Looks like on... Pamela has her hand raised. Oh, sorry. Sure. Okay. All right, Pamela. Where oh, I just it? wanted to uh, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you. I actually have to jump off the call for uh, another engagement, but I look forward to um, spending more time with you. So thank you very much. Okay. Well, thank Same. you. And again, Same here. Thank you all so much for welcoming us to your community. Well, and guys, I look hang on. Can you hang on for just a moment, please? I know you got to race for off. For sure. There was one set of introductions we haven't done. I think we should. And that the members of the personnel board. No because these may be new folks for you as well. I'm Tony Butterfield. I am the current chair. I've been in this position for a while, actually probably longer than I should have. I'm a retired professor uh, from the UMass uh, Eisenberg School of Management. My field is organizational behavior. My particular research interest is kind of relevant for what we do here and it's gender and leadership. So you are all my research subjects. <laughs> <laughs> So that's who I am. Who else can say a few words about yourself? Okay, Tammy. Um, I'm Tamsin Ely. I'm a representative of the Board of Library Tr Trustees. I am a retired librarian. I actually worked for 36 years in Springfield at Springfield Tech Community College, where I was the director of the library. And I joined the Board of Trustees here in 2012, shortly after I had retired. So <laughs> shows that you don't really retire. <laughs> you take on additional work, but mm -hmm. um, I'm glad to join the board. Chris Hoffman had been the, the board um, rep for many, many years, but he did not run for re-election in November of 2021. And um, I volunteered to take over the library's personnel policy and planning committee and therefore join the personnel board. Great. Thank you, Tammy. Catherine? Yeah, hi, uh, Catherine Porter. Um, I was a faculty member uh, at UMass, and when I retired, um, I was serving as the ombuds person. Um, so everything that's come up since I've been on the personnel board, um, I can relate to because uh, if you know what the ombuds person does, it's everything that uh, deals with the problem of some sort. So. Um, Everything that we talk about resonates. Uh, I feel like I'm a really pretty good fit for the personnel board and have um, certainly liked working with everybody. And um, I obviously we're a quiet part of the town government, but uh, an important part um, because uh, the fact that we deal with personnel in so many ways. So that be mine. Thank you, Catherine. Rebecca? Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I am decidedly not retired, <laughs> uh, but uh, look forward to that in 20 years or so. But I'm a I'm professor of educational leadership policy and administration at UMass. Um, I'm a former middle and high school teacher. I'm a former director of dropout prevention. I, I've, I've worked with homeless and abused kids for years before I was even in higher ed. Um, my specialty area is effective teaming and collaboration so that we have organizational learning and people that are like psyched to be working where they're working and, and make things happen. So I think I'm probably a decent fit um, for being here. And I just wanted to give a shout out to our high school principal, Talib Sadiq, who was a guest speaker in my class yesterday. I teach a big undergraduate class called Schooling in the United States. And he's been a, a guest of mine in class for many semesters, but I just wanted to, in this forum of town folk, to just say how lucky we are to have Talib at the helm of the high school, considering what an end it was to last year and what a beginning it has been this year. And just, so just wanted to put a shout out because I think, Earl, you've met Talib, right? You've, yeah, yeah. So anyway. Oh, we're joined at the hip. I'm, I'm joined glad at you, the hip. We I, like that. I, I just want to say, I think this is something important. This is the most people of color I've ever worked with in leadership in a space. And I always wondered what that would feel like. And it really does mm -hmm. like change what you think you could be. And so like Talib is one of the folks who has really changed the way I even see myself here. And so I appreciate you putting a lens on that. And I think that is a, a testament to what this town is doing. It, it, feels, uh, it feels important. Awesome. Great. 
Well, thank you very much. Thank you, colleagues on the personnel board. Uh, we're done with those introductions. So if our visitors need to race off to another meeting, feel free to do so. Um, I do want to ask, uh, since we the, the board members just introduced themselves, we are one person short. And I wanted to ask Paul or Kay or whoever might know the answer to this. Um, there is a member of the personnel board who is designated as representing the uh, town employees and is a person who was uh, is a retired town employee. And where are we on finding a replacement for? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we have re I've reached out to um, non-union employees to see if there's anybody that they could think of who lived in town who mm -hmm. they would like to have represent them. Um, and so a couple names have been forwarded. Many of the people whose names came forward are not living in town or anymore. We do have someone I just uh, reached out to this morning, actually, who could be a good fit to see if they would be interested. Um, the way it's been in the past is that we had Teresa who basically sort of said, here's, here's who we want. And I'm not sure what process the non-union employees used in that. I don't think there was a much of a process, quite frankly, at all. But um, they everybody was satisfied with, and pleased to have Charlie Sherpa represent the non-union employees. So now that that's opening up, I'm reaching out to the non-union employees, say, who, who would you re recommend to me to appoint? So um, we're continuing, it's a, it's a recruitment process, really, at this point, because this is a, a unique position. It's not just an open seat. Right. So working on it. Okay. And, and open to suggestions for anybody. Okay. It's in process. Uh, obviously, one criterion is they got to live in town. Yes. Yeah. That's the, uh, the most difficult criteria. Uh, it doesn't actually have to be a retired employee. We've just right. been fortunate to have retired employees that have been willing to serve in the past. Um, the, the bylaw itself requires that the employee representative be a resident of Amherst. Um, so a lot of names have been put forth um, by employees, but the majority of, of the folks that have been suggested haven't lived in Amherst or okay. don't anymore. Okay, so that was my misunderstanding about having to be a retired employee. That is sort of trumped by having to be a citizen or a, a resident of Amherst. And um, okay, so somebody currently on board somewhere in the system could be the representative, right? Yeah. You mean a current employee? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. oh, Potentially. No. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, not be oh okay. I, All right. Well, I was wondering about that. So now I'm, it, I think I, 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 I'm understanding the shades of difference in it, my understanding. It can yeah. be a member of the public that does have, that has no affiliation with, with um, being a, a um, employee Got of the it. town. Got it. Okay. But somebody presumably that the employees are supportive of being on the board since it's, this is a slot that in theory right. uh, is, uh, is representing them. Okay, thank you very much. Um, now under new business, again, I'm working right off uh, our agenda. I think we're down to discussion of the part-time wage scale. And I'm not entirely sure why that is on there as a discussion point, but I know there's some news that I think people mostly, mostly know, know about this, but um, why is that item on the agenda? Because uh, we, we put it on the uh, we put it on the agenda because, um, as you, some of you might recall, uh, it's been about four years since we updated the part time chart, um, right. and um, well, we don't do colas on the part time employees. Um, we do need to, because of the compression of um, of the chart due to the increases in minimum wage, uh, I put it on for discussions so that we could talk about what we might want to do with the chart for the future. Um, one of the suggestions I think that was put forth last year was to add a step uh, at the top of the chart. Um, and 
I, there may be other creative ways that we want to address the chart, but at this point, the top pay in level one is 15.45 an hour. So there's not much room to move off of the $15 that the minimum that we went to in July. Okay. All right. So that's why it's on there. Questions, comments about this? I actually have some, 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 some questions. I actually thought it might be on here mostly to announce to those who uh, aren't aware or are only vaguely aware uh, what I consider to be a signal event. And that is moving up to the uh, required $15 an hour uh, wage six months early. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the law, well, for the law sort of says this has got to happen on January 1, 2023. But for a while now, I know Paul has been talking about desiring to move that up uh, early and it happened. And so kudos to that for happening. I, I, I hope all the folks uh, who are benefiting from that feel that this is a good thing and they appreciate how the town is looking out for them because this is a raise that really came six months early. So yippee, Paul, thank you for that. Yeah, it's it all about budgeting the fund. So all the departments were held harmless when the rates went up. Um, I think what, what Kay is saying is I, with that, we do need to relook at the part-time wage schedule. And if that's okay with the, I mean, sort of previewing it with you and then come back to you with a recommendation in a future meeting. Oh, well, again, I don't want to hog the, my answer to this, absolutely do that. But I have to confess, Paul, I, I thought that, you know, for the part-time wage scale, we, we just did an outside consultant's review of that whole system. And I thought that was going to include how to make future pay raises at, for part-time people in an equitable manner. There were all those, you know, salary charts that I think were projected way beyond 2022 to accommodate that, am I is my memory failing me again, as it frequently does? That that uh, they aren't already baked in to pay raises. Uh, I don't think your memory is failing you at all. Um, we did have projections to January of 2023, um, but uh, Sandy Stepchinsky, who did the um, study for us uh, didn't go beyond 2023. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, you know, time flies and we uh, didn't, we didn't make any provisions or any discussion uh, beyond January of 2023, which is when the $15 was coming into effect. Um, okay. So, so now I have a related question, and this uh, uh, I should have had this on the uh, on our on our agenda, but that is the bigger study, uh, which we've been talking about. Paul's been talking about for a while. That was a request to the town council for funding. I think it was called a capital project. Mm -hmm. That uh, my understanding is has been approved and that's for a more full blown, that's not just for part-timers, that's for the whole shebang, the full-timers as well as the part-timers because as we all know, there are some complexities involved here of keeping the system sort of in some equitable logical uh, manner as folks move ahead in their position and the steps and what's the next grade that they might be Considering, so where are we on that project, Paul? Let me just ask that directly to you. Because you, you got the okay from the town council, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, so we have the money, yeah. So that was on Donna Ray's list, but then with her departure, that sort of, we're, her priority before she left was to work on all the union contracts that we had in, in play. And we had a lot of other things happening with union contracts. So that was that was bumped down. It's still something we have the money set, set aside for. Um, Hopefully with a new person coming in, we'll be able to do the RFP for that and move that forward. Okay. So we've got the go ahead, but mm -hmm. we're waiting to have the relevant folks involved before before moving too far ahead. So that's something right. on the horizon that I think we'll all look forward to. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't know, Kay, whether how closely we should look at the part-time wage scale issue without keeping in mind that there's going to be a bigger study done sometime in the not too distant future that we would want those to be moving in sync, would we not? I don't want to get it's too It's certainly far. possible for them to move in sync. Um, and this is not an urgency because um, although we don't have to do the state minimum wage, we historically have because it's just simply the right thing to do. Right. Um, so um, this is this has no urgency. I just wanted to okay. get out there that it was something that we needed to put on the radar. Great. Good. Thank you. Yes, we're sort of where we want to be, maybe a little ahead of time, but that doesn't mean everything stops. <laughs> it's time rolls on. Right. And uh, particularly in these inflationary times, uh, everybody's looking at his or her paycheck and wants it to try to keep up with the cost of things they're buying in the grocery store and at the gas pump uh, and so forth. Okay. So Sharon has her hand up, Tony. Okay, all right. Pardon me for not noticing those things. Sharon, welcome. <laughs> Hi, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, no, my only question is, so I am I was thrilled to see this on the agenda, actually. And uh, Kay, thank you so much for this. And I'm, I was wondering, could we consider adding a COLA to this wage chart every single year? That way we don't get back to where we were a few years ago. Um, I have PTSD from that and <laughs> I bet you guys do too. Um, I, so I know there are financial implications, um, but I, yeah, I would just love it if you guys would consider that. I agree with with Kay that it's not, it it doesn't have to happen today. The The chart is really quite fabulous, but in a couple of years, it's going to be outdated. Thank yep. you, guys. Okay. I think I see some heads nodding yes to we can consider it. <laughs> okay. Which is not a promise. <laughs> it shall be done. All right. But it will be considered. Okay. Now, on the agenda I'm looking at, I think we are down to old business. And the first item there is additional discussion. And this is just on, on the list to make sure we haven't forgotten all those things that were mentioned by the employees at our wonderful townwide employee meeting on March 9th. Uh, a list was developed and um, reported in the minutes of that meeting. And then uh, the minutes of our most recent meeting, May 11th also, has uh, a list of some of the topics that were discussed then. And I just want to make sure there isn't anything on there that we are going to forget about or have already forgotten about. Uh, and um, if, you, if you could maybe peek ahead at the minutes of our May meeting to see what's on that list. Some of what we've been talking about already has been discussed, like the capital $50,000 projects and we have already moved to $15 an hour uh, early. Uh, another item was Zoom meetings and uh, wh where are we on that? Is this now Zoom optional or required or no longer necessary, Paul? Uh, for, for committee meetings, we're, we're yeah. staying with Zoom for the, for the time being. We're permitted to do it by state law until March 31st of 2023. Um, and the council is doing their main meetings in a hybrid format. They they just voted last week or two weeks ago to allow people in the room if they so chose. Um, their committee meetings, which is the bulk of their meetings, continue to be like this, like Zoom meetings uh, with virtual participation. Um, so that's our intention. Uh, we have limited room capacity right now still. Um, given the sort of prevalence of, of the different versions of, of the COVID-19 um, disease. So, uh, and there's, we're still seeing a lot of um, COVID out there. So our health director has continued, has encouraged us to stay in this format um, for the time being. And, you know, quite frankly, there is a, 
a debate in town is to many people really appreciate the Zoom um, approach because it makes things a lot more easy and a lot easier. A lot more people participate in council meetings for sure uh, because of the availability of Zoom. They don't have to come into the building. Um, the, the, then people say, well, why not? Why can't we do hybrid like the council does? And that's a very intense uh, technical and it, it, it support only one room in our uh, in the town uh, buildings is equipped with that, and that's the town room. Um, these hybrid meetings are, if you think about it, what they are are basically Zoom meetings where everybody has their laptop in front of them, but pe some people are in the same room. And when you have people in the same room, there becomes a lot of audio um, overlap, and that become you need a sound system to manage that. And that's why the why it's it's not just why can't we just all go in the same room and turn on a camera? It's it's not as simple as that. So we're working with IT to set up additional rooms so we can do that uh, going forward. Okay. Thank you. Again, looking at the, the list from our May 11 minutes, um, an item raised at the uh, at the employees meeting was parking permits, rising fees, and parking for town employees on Spring Street. Anything happening there? <laughs> No, I mean, we, we recognize that that's going to be a challenge. It's going to be more challenging going forward. Um, you know, there's a new building being built on Spring Street. We anticipate that that will sop up some of the spaces um, that employees typically park on. We can't, we don't, we're not creating, a, we can't create additional parking spaces. We have talked to the co Amherst College about utilizing some of their parking that they have there. The part, they have a big alumni parking lot there. Um, and they're open to that discussion, although they can't commit to it all the time because they may need it at different times. So, um, so they're 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 willing to have the conversation in essence for that. But I think that's uh, it. It hasn't really. People are finding that they have to park farther away from town hall, and that's a nuisance. Right. Right. Okay. Remote work policy was revised. Keneally put a policy in place that Mr. Bachman has not received yet. He's thinking about it. Yeah. So that was a, well, that was one of those things that Donna and Ray and I were working on um, that didn't complete before she left. Is somebody going to take the reins with that and talk about that? Uh, for some yeah. Thought into the, it? Okay. The, when our new HR director comes okay. back that right. it's, yep. you know, a lot of people are sort of in settled into their patterns. I think we, we, um, we just haven't formalized a lot of the things. There's some people who are working remotely, some people working on a hybrid schedule and some people working full-time in the building. And it, it really, we've really left that up to the department heads to manage. Um, and that's been actually pretty successful. Good. Okay. We just don't have a, a, a written policy on how we're doing it. And we've looked at a lot of other communities. Lexington has a pretty robust policy on it. Um, and a lot of communities are struggling with it because a lot of a lot of companies are struggling with it too. Like and they it's just a philosophy thing. You know, do some companies are saying, I want everybody in the room, you know, other people are saying, I could care what less where you do, just do your job. So okay, thank you. And um, the other items uh, on our the May 11th minutes uh, from the employee meeting we've sort of already talked about, but I want to go back to the March 9 list uh, that we developed at our meeting immediately after the employees meeting because there's some stuff that and the reason I'm doing this is that we asked folks to tell us what's on their mind and they mm -hmm. did. We made a list of it and I don't want us to forget what's on that list. Uh, and some things maybe can be forgotten about because they've been dealt with, but I just don't want it shelved. And somebody said, well, what did the personnel board do about it? Oops, we forgot about it. So now I'm looking at the March 9th minutes because there's some items that I want to ask about. Um, one was, the, actually the first uh, bullet point was, was something about comp time earned. Do we know what that means? Because I have to confess, I'm not sure. Hey, do you know what that's referencing? Um, I think that that was probably referencing what the personnel procedures manual says. Um, and I think that the practice has been for earning comp time is none of the uh, managerial employees are um, earning comp time. Uh, 
it. And, but basically the procedures manual has a um, category that says that they, every, that management employees are expected to work 40 hours a week um, and that they will not earn comp time until after 40 hours. And some there's some interpretation that management employees don't earn comp time at all. Uh, and that's created some difficulties. And then there's a distinction between um, who is really management and who is who is not in the non-union employees. Um, so that that's created some um, confusion about uh, whether or not they can earn comp time and accrue it. So what should we do about this issue? Should well, we I think that one of the things that's happening is that you might recall uh, a number of years ago, I think maybe 2018, the procedures manual was revised. Um, so there is a committee of employees that are um, planning to attempt another revision and will bring something to you on that. Um, it is, I know it's for sure on their list of uh, items to tackle. Okay. And it, there are a few other things that um, people would like to see addressed uh, that either need to be updated or, or haven't been addressed in a while. Oh, so there, there is a committee. Uh, they're in a hiatus right now because of the HR director's yeah. situation, but um, there is a plan to, to start reviewing the procedures manual again. Oh, good. All right. That's good to know. And some of the other bullet points on this, earning overtime in weeks with a holiday. Noted as um, really a concern for the clerk's office and, uh, and elections. Right, and that's a, a, actually the, other than the town clerk, the employees in the clerk's office are under the SEIU contract. Uh, and we have to follow that contract. So for the personnel board, this is kind of a non-issue. Okay. All right. Well, we're happy to leave alone items that aren't our business anyway. <laughs> no complaints there. And I'm looking at the other uh, items on that list. Um, my quick, well, add a retirement notice incentive. You know what that means? <clears throat> yeah, it used to be before the retirement reforms in, in 2012, uh, it used to be that people could get, if they provided um, advance notice, sometimes up to a year notice of retirement, um, they could get additional compensation that was added to their base pay to enhance their retirement. Uh, that all changed in 2012. Uh, I'm not sure if people really realize that, um, but it's no longer considered regular compensation. Um, but some places still do it. I believe like the school department has a, a somewhat of an incentive if they uh, provide notice by December of the year before they retire. Uh, and I, you know, there's probably people that are aware of that um, practice in the schools. Okay. Is this something that the task force that's going to take a look at the personnel procedures manuals might want to uh, incorporate in their work? They not? may. I mean, it would be a new uh, a new uh, suggestion. And, and the only thing I would add to that is, you know, once we put something in the procedures manual that's new, um, it tends to filter out to all the unions. So this would be a budgetary situation right. that we would have to look at and we should look at it more globally than perhaps whoever was suggesting it would suspect well Kay, there you go again demonstrating how lucky we are to have you <laughs> on the board or unlucky depending I mean, upon no, your uh, no, <laughs> point of view 
that we need, you know, and um, there's a bigger picture here. <laughs> and uh, so thank you for these, uh, these answers to my, uh, to my questions. And, um, and again, the rest of the items from the March 9 minutes we've basically dealt with. So I just want to want to be able to say, we're looking into all those issues. And mm -hmm. some we're able to deal with, some not, some where you have to wait for a while till we get a new HR director, but we haven't forgot about. Them. And uh, so I think- Yeah, I think there really is something with the comp time and, and the way it's being administered and, and some feelings of unfairness by some of the employees uh, in regard to how it how it's taking place. Yep. So that is something that definitely needs to be addressed. Um, Okay, thank you. And from my perspective, we're doing due diligence on that list of uh, issues that the employees uh, raised at our March uh, 9 meeting. Uh, we now, um, again, following our agenda, second bullet point under old business is update on employee retention. And I, I don't know for sure, I mean, that's been an issue still an issue. I know some steps were underway uh, to try to, well, do a better job sort of onboarding people when they first arrive, match them up with folks uh, who can be mentors mm -hmm. or guides. Um, I don't know if anything has changed in that respect. Um, Paul, so, yeah. you like you're just ready to. to yeah, so that. so we have been more purposeful about that in terms of uh, re retaining people, connecting people, um, uh, having sort of an informal mentorship with with folks as they come on uh, on staff, and that's that has been um, uh, successful on a, on a, in, in the sort of socializing department heads into their new positions. Um, you know, I think that we do acknowledge. That there's a general um, trend of, of of quicker turnovers in general for staff. We're noticing it especially high with the police department. We have many police officers who are now departing um, for various reasons. Many um, looking to go. Every police department is hiring. Some to, some are looking um, at um, other um, communities that they feel are more. Uh, conducive to their their goals as police officers. So, okay. Um, let me let me throw an additional observation about employee retention that's actually quite relevant as we're searching for an HR director. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is, are there things we could do before we actually hire somebody with the candidates or even with the preferred candidate to make sure the fit is going to be what the candidate is expecting as well as us. There, uh, yeah. the HR literature, there used to be a concept, it's probably still around, uh, but I'm not keeping up with it, called realistic job preview. And that is, do the candidates really know what they're getting in for if they take this position? Are mm -hmm. there some things they hadn't fully appreciated while they were uh, being recruited and uh, and a candidate, and, uh, I so yeah. Uh, so this is a, a constant con um, conversation among managers. I mean, I was just at a conference of, of in for uh, managers from across the country. Recruitment and retention is a big thing, uh, just because of the job market. We are often in a situation where two things happen. One is we're trying to uh, recruit people and convince them to take the job. Um, so we're in a competitive environment. We're, we're in a seller's market in essence. Um, and so um, putting up challenges to say, are you sure um, is sort of defeats the purpose of trying to get a talented person. The other thing that we have done is recruited from people outside the municipal sector. Um, and that comes, people come into the municipal sector and are, um, kind of stunned by the challenges that um, 
that working in the public sector brings. And we've done a pretty good job at recruiting people from alternative places, which is what our one of our goals has been to sort of um, mix up the, the applicant pool. But it has come with with certain challenges that for someone being successful in their position. So um, that has taken additional management time to try and uh, support them. And and right now, what you know, we talked about this before. Is what we used to do is like, okay, here are the keys to the car. You know, start driving, and we don't tell them where to drive or how to drive. Um, and trying to do better at that, especially for certain, you know, I'm focused on department heads, but for all employees, really, um, that that's the case. Um, you know, I think we we benefit from people coming from other um, from outside the municipal world because they have different experiences and bring new ideas. You know, and I think that that's a real real <clears throat> plus for us, but, um, you know, retention is, is a challenge. Um, and I think that, you know, um, I hear what you're saying about the like realistic job explanations, <laughs> but uh, sometimes you can say that, that that can convey to people that, that you don't want them to be here, you know? Well, it's a fine line. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but let me just keep with your analogy. I like that analogy of here's the keys to the car. <clears throat> Um, I think we, we want to be sure that uh, they know how to drive a stick shift mm -hmm. because this job in, you know, involves driving a stick shift. Yep. It, it is just, you know, putting it in automatic drive mm -hmm. and the way you go. And we, we may have some jobs that we're searching for that are stick shift type jobs. You know, there's some elements mm -hmm. that are not as smooth uh, as people might be accustomed to. So, but it's tough, you know, that's the bind. We want, we want this good person to come. But do we really want to tell them everything that's so bad about this guy? <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> is here. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. Forget that. <laughs> that part of the <laughs> okay. So. All right, oh. let's see. Anything else on uh Employee retention. Um, staffing report is the next item on the old business list. And Elizabeth worked hard to give us an update on who's been going and who's been coming. Any observations that you want to make about this list or any of my colleagues on the uh, board who had a chance to, uh, to look at it? Sure. Um, obviously, since the last meeting was May, there's the numbers seem quite large. Um, just but it, um, so for terminations, there was a total of 17, um, eight males, nine females. Uh, the majority four came from the police department. Um, three from fire, obviously two from HR, um, two from the library, a dispatcher, Cress, um, senior center ambassador, and a fire inspector. Um, there was a few of those were retirements as well, uh, which I think is important to note. Um, and for the new hires, there was 22, which I think is exciting. Um, many of them were the crest responders in July. Um, so I believe they're almost fully staffed. They have one more spot left open to fill. Um, there was eight males hired, 14 females. Um, 14 of those were white five were black, two Hispanics, and one that was two or more races. Um, and positions that are still um, be needing to be filled. Again, the one crest responder, which I know they're actively interviewing right now for, uh, the HR director, which we spoke about. Um, there's one emergency dispatcher still needed. And there's a DPW maintenance worker as well. Questions, comments, observations from my colleagues? Uh, well, I would like to observe there, there sure are a lot of people who resigned uh, from that list. Do we know why in those cases? Was it well, a bad fit? Or did they all get fabulous job offers from other places that uh, we couldn't match or? Well, each person has, we, we do do exit interviews, their HR, HR does exit interviews, so there, right. there's a story for every departure. Um, many people have gone on to get significant increases in their salaries um, from here. Um, 
some, as I mentioned in the in the police department, it's more um, the stress of the job and um, and the atmosphere that they're working in. Um, you know, a lot of the uh, is a bunch of them are um, just people making the decision that uh, I'm not I've, I'm done. You know, especially after the pandemic, there were several people who just said, "I've this woke me up, and I'm going to do something different in my life." But well, I, I hope we're tracking the people we lose because they've moved to another community or taken another job where there's a significant increase in pay and benefits mm -hmm. because we, we need to know that. The town needs to know that. And, um, you know, the question, are, are we as good as we used to think we were, which was, uh, and we had some data that said we were in the 75th uh, quartile of uh, municipal pay and are we losing ground in that? Uh, and maybe the study that we're about to launch uh, will produce some data on that. I know we had a year ago, Paul, you had, we had heard that Great Barrington had done this study at the department head level, uh, which indicated, well, actually what we're paying our department heads is pretty similar to what our comparison group is. So we didn't have to feel too badly about that. Although on an individual basis, it seems that when we lose people, and it's to their credit, you know, they have found another job, maybe not exactly the same job they had here, but at a significant pump up in pay. Mm -hmm. And that's tough to, to compete with, but at least we want to know the data. Uh, and I think the study that's about to get launched should produce uh, good comparative data. Well, and we also have people seeking additional challenges outside so we have three former employees since i've been here who've become town administrators um yeah. we've had uh, i think two police officers who who've become chiefs and the same with the fire department so we tend to incubate people and then our there isn't uh, people want growth and um when that isn't really easily um manifesting itself in our organization people will seek other things and that's that's a that's a positive for us quite honestly it is indeed and it's a it's a it's a it's a good reflection on the town and on you paul that uh that we we hire good people we develop good people they get good jobs uh some within the town some because the pickings are better somewhere else mm -hmm. and uh you know, the last thing you want to do is is prevent people from growing and developing, and it's inevitable that we're going to lose some good ones. And there's just uh, that's just part of the cost of doing business and doing a decent job hiring and developing the talent that we uh, that we do have. Um, but it's a constant push, and you know this better than I do. I would like to, given the all the folks leaving, but especially coming on board to commend the HR department for doing, hiring all of these people mm -hmm. during a time of some turmoil within the department itself. I mean, Joanne left, what, the end of May, I think. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there's a pretty important resource uh, to lose right in the middle of trying to hire a whole lot of folks. And then um, Donna Ray uh, more recently. So kudos to the folks. I'm sure they've been busting their buns in the HR department to bring on board this rather large number of people. So congratulations. And I'm sure Paul will make sure there's an extra $5,000 in your Christmas bonus <laughs> this year. And uh, please delete that from the tape of this <laughs> or we'll be in deep trouble. I think we are at the moment we've all been waiting for, which is approving the minutes <laughs> of our May 11th meeting. Tammy, yes, question. Yeah, um, sure. Christopher Hoffman was listed on this um, on these minutes, and it should be me. I don't know what happened <laughs> because the March ones were correct, but um, I don't know if Joanne yeah. just used a previous template, so that needs to be corrected. Yes, I'm glad you caught that. Okay, uh, I'll make that change. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Uh, anything else that folks have noticed that needs to be corrected or added or deleted? 
Um, if not, do I hear a motion to approve the meeting of our minutes uh, from May 11th? I move that we approve the minutes from May 11th. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion, dear colleagues? All in favor say aye, wave your hands. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, I'm, I'm the one who said, let's meet next on Wednesday, November the 16th, which means we're skipping October. I could be talked out of that, but my reasoning was that that's only, if we, if we meet the second week in October, that's only two weeks from today. <laughs> and that seems a little bit um, yeah, uh, too soon. Soon. So, but if folks feel you know November sixteenth is a little, a little bit too late, we can we can reconsider a, a different time. But I thought it was just simplest to say, okay, let's push things back to November sixteenth. Are there any comments or concerns about that, your colleagues? <laughs> All right, are we, do I have any topics I did not reasonably anticipate for you? Yeah, I've already inserted them sort of in our discussion, so. Are we ready to adjourn? Yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. See you Thank on the you. 15th, if not. <laughs> Hang in there, everybody. We got work Thank to you. do. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you all. Six ways. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.